Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Rural Water Resource Management course, week one, lecture three, where we would be discussing about in the first week, uh, importance of water resource management in India, and also some of the hydrological components we'll be introducing in the lecture. Before we start, I hope uh, you had a chance to look at the units and how it has been in Indian context. So please go ahead and check what are the different water units because that would be applied here in, in, in due course. So let's look at the water cycle. Um, and we would be today we will be looking at uh, per capita water use, which is how much water at a domestic level we use uh, and how much uh, we consume uh, in, in terms of relative terms of the total water available. So in the water cycle for rural water management, I know, said again that there will be less emphasis on snow, snow melt, etc. But how much precipitation as rainfall occurs, uh, which is used for the rainfall crop season and also the non-monsoon season. So there are two important seasons, monsoon and non-monsoon. So during the monsoon, we use the precipitation water and whereas in the non-monsoon season, we use water from storage units like dams, lakes, rivers, etc., and also from groundwater aquifers. So in today's lecture, we would be looking at what is the consumption in India? How do you define how much water is available and how much of that water is segregated in different units? Okay. How do we know how much we use? First, we need to start with how much we have and as a percentage, how much do we use? When it comes to this kind of estimates, there are, you would come across different sources. Okay? So right now I'm being using the Central Water Commission report, uh, but you would also see Ministry of Irrigation, Water Resource Development um, and different, different groundwater board. So there are different agencies that quantify water differently. Uh, the idea is they would have better data on specific units. For example, Central Water Commission would look more into the discharge units, whereas IMD, uh, which is more concentrated on weather forecast, weather parameters, they would have better estimates of rainfall, those kind of things. So uh, we would touch upon this in later part of the course where we discuss the different agencies, how you can get data for your analysis, etc. So let's look at water availability in India. And again, I've cited my sources. Please use this source or different sources when you want to look at uh, different components. The annual precipitation is approximately, all these are approximate numbers, around 4,000 BCM and BCM is billion cubic meters, okay? So cubic meters is uh, meters times three dimensions. So uh, we have meters, meter square as an area, so meter cube, cubic meters as a volume and billion. So we cannot put that as a number, so we just use BCM, okay? And MCM would stand for million cubic meters. So at an annual average for India, we have around 4,000 billion cubic meters from precipitation, including snowfall, because India is a beautiful, unique country. You have deserts, you have the Himalayas, you have rainforest, everything, every different type of uh, geological environmental setting is available. So if you look at precipitation and the different types, uh, we do have snowfall, we do have just rainfall, etc. So if you total it, it is around 400,000 billion cubic meters. And the average annual availability is only 18.69 billion cubic meters, which is 1,869 billion cubic meters. You would see a big difference, almost 40 to 50% is lost. Why? Is because 
uh, not all rainfall is readily capturable or available for use. As I said, snowfall might be locked in ice caps. So yes, snowfall is happening, but some of the snowfall still remains on the Himalayas. Um, so that those water we have to neglect, we cannot uh, take it as an available water. Okay? So approximately around uh, 40, 45% uh, is available. Um, and then we go to per capita water availability, different estimates. Okay, So if you look at 2001, it was estimated as uh, 1,816 cubic meters of per capita available water. So per capita is how much water we have per person is the per capita in cubic meters. Okay, so in 2001, it was 18, 16 cubic meters. In uh, 2010, it was 15, 88 came down, which means the country was stressed for water to give the public. So there was a, a little bit decrease in amount of water available per person. Okay, uh, and then we have uh, per capita water availability in cubic meters in 2015 was 1720. So think about these numbers. Okay, so these are annual numbers. All these are annual numbers. You could see that it fluctuates. It fluctuates depending on the precipitation, depending on how much water is available. Okay, so not all the precipitation is available. So some water is locked and some water is readily available for human use. And that is what the per capita tells us. Every country would have its rate. We will go through that in the next couple of slides. So estimated utilizable water resources is around 1,023 billion cubic meters. So of the 1869 billion cubic meters, remember the units, the per capita is in cubic meters, not billion, because it is per person, per use, per year, uh, and uh, the annual availability in billion. So of the available water, 1,123 billion cubic meters is utilizable readily. Okay, uh, and some are going in as recharge, so you cannot use them. Uh, it is fresh water which goes into recharge, etc. So, of the utilizable surface water resources is 690 billion cubic meters. Surface water resources include rivers, dams, lakes, ponds, storage units like tanks, etc. Whereas groundwater resources is around 433 billion cubic meters. So, you see a slightly higher surface volume. Um, compared to the groundwater volume. And that is because you have big rivers in India and a lot of structures in India compared to the groundwater resources. And some of the groundwater, when it goes into the aquifers, is lost because it goes down into deeper aquifers, which is not readily available. So how do we know each use? So now we have known what is the input to the system, which is your precipitation and where it's segregated is yes, surface water and groundwater, okay? But how do we know uh, how we use each one of them? Okay, so let's take some of the sectors that use water higher consumption rate compared to the other sectors. Most important, as I said, is India is an agrarian nation. So we still have most of the water used for irrigation, followed by industry and drinking water. Okay, so domestic consumption is still high um, because of the population we have. So irrigation water, agriculture water is, is the top, followed by drinking water, and then we have energy and industry combined together as industry use uh, and other uses around, um, which would be your uh, domestic supply in terms of washing, cleaning, those kind of things, um, and uh, other uses, okay, forest, etc. So if you look at the sector, um, irrigation as per the standing subcommittee of the Ministry of Water Resources, uh, we had around, we have three estimates, 2010, 2025, and 2050, okay? Um, and then you have another estimate from National Committee on Integrated Water Resource uh, Development. So there are a couple of different committees, there are a couple of different 
uh, government agencies that do these estimations differently. Um, and as I said, they have different data sources. It's not the same always. And that is why you see a difference in the estimates. So if you look at 2010, 2025, 2050, 2010 um, is gone. So we could start with 2025, which is near 2021 right now, 2022. Uh, and 2050 is a hypothetical estimate. So look at irrigation. It has increased from 688, 910,072 million cubic meters. Uh, and if you look at irrigation, uh, let's just look at the high. So these are the low and high, and then you can take an average. So low, how much low they will use, minimum use, and the maximum use. Okay. So we'll just take the high columns uh, just to compare. So you will see that 557, 611, 807, so it is increasing. So both the estimates are telling that the irrigation water consumption would increase by 2050. The drinking water consumption also is steadily increasing 56, 73, 102, 43, 62, 111, uh, which also tells us that the domestic consumption of water is also increasing. It could be because of your population increase. It could be because of better lifestyle. People do have better access. So the drinking access and water is increasing. Then you have industry sector, which is booming in India. So 12, 23, 63, so see the jump uh, between the years and then 37, 67, 81. So there's no high low uh, for um, as per NCWRD for industry because it's a standard rate they know. So, so they just put that rate. Energy, how much water is used in the energy sector? It could be cooling your thermal power plants. It could be your hydropower, all the energy components. So you see that it is steadily increasing because uh, both irrigation is increasing. The consumption of energy is, is going to increase in the future. So all the estimates show that it's going to increase 1933-70. So we do need more water for energy. And other allied sectors also would increase 80, 70, 111. So what this shows us is just let's look at the totals. So you see the totals that from 813, it increases to 1093 billion cubic meters and then 1447 billion cubic meters. Let's just focus on uh, Ministry of Water Resources. You could see that it is tremendously increasing. Whereas your precipitation, annual precipitation is going to be the same. So what does that mean? If your input into a system is going to be almost the same, to be honest, it's decreasing. So still, let's say it is the same, but your consumption is going very, very high. So which means there's going to be tremendous stress on the water resources. And this is where we need to have a better water management plan. When you come to the differences, of sectors, you could see that you could do a lot of interventions in drinking water, industry, energy, but it will be minuscule, very small compared to your total. Why? Because the total is driven by irrigation water demand. So of 1,447, 1,000 uh, liters, 1,000 billion cubic meters is used for irrigation. So you need to conserve water more in the irrigation sector. And then irrigation is in the rural uh, region. So that is why this course is focusing mostly on rural water resource management. Feel free to look at the sources and how they estimate it. But basically, they know how much area they have, what type of crops they have. So that is how they estimate these uh, volumes in the industries, et cetera. How do they know what industries come? They have a trajectory. OK, so okay, we have car industries. In 10 years, we, we would have another one more car industry, something like that. But irrigation is almost on the ballpark, which is the biggest user of water. So as I said, they, they estimate it by uh, looking at what area we have and what type of crop we have. But how do we understand how much water we consume? This is a very important uh, parameter for the National Rural Drinking Water Program. Okay, so they have estimates. It's called liters per capita per day. You can convert it into per year also. So uh, it is defined as the water volume in liters needed per day per person for a particular region. 
uh, types of regions, uh, most importantly, rural regions and urban regions. Uh, and rural gets anywhere from 40 to 70 to 55 LPCD. On paper, it is around 55. Uh, but the actual uh, rates might be different. And then for uh, urban regions, it's anywhere from 150 to 200 LPCD. Urban regions get more water. It's not that they're going to drink more water, but because of their lifestyle, because of the sanitation systems they have, for example, drainage, they need to supply that much water to push the drainage. So they have flush toilets. Uh, they would have uh, uh, more access to water for cleaning. So those kind of things are, are expected higher in an urban region. And that is why you would see a higher water use rate in um, urban regions. Let's just focus on the rural, okay? So the government missions are working tremendously hard on increasing these values because there is a big disparity. Uh, you have 55 liters per day per person in a village where it is almost four times, four times that in an urban setting. So if you look at the liters they drink, it's almost eight liters per day. So it's not big consumption difference as drinking, but the water they use for cleansing, uh, toilets, uh, and then other recreational activities, washing the cars, et cetera, is, is high in urban regions. And because of that, the pressure on water resource management is high. So there has to be some, um, uh, you know, normal normalization of these rates. So the government missions are working hard to increase the standard of rural livelihoods, rural people, by giving them more access to water. And they have promised to give around 70 liters per capita per day, according to the uh, National Rural Drinking Water Program. So there are multiple programs and multiple subsections in the programs, which aim to give, depending on the location, because you cannot give 70 expect to give 70 liters per day in a desert region. It's so costly. So, uh, and in, in other rural regions, like for example, um, Northeast where there's good rainfall, you, you'd expect higher LPCD. So, but across the across India, at least the, the bare minimum, uh, the Indian government wants to give 70 liters per day. So while implementing rural water schemes, the following norms are adopted for providing portable drinking water to the population. This is good quality drinking water. And water use, okay? So clean, fresh water. So what are the norms? At least, again, this goes to the minimum. So 40 liters I, I mentioned in the previous slide. So at least 40 liters. And how is that 40 liters broken up? So for drinking, it is at least three liters per day per person. And studies say around six to eight liters. So Three liters is still good. Uh, cooking around five liters, um, bathing 15 uh, liters, washing utensils and house is around seven liters. This is the uh, interior of the house and cooking vessels you wash. And ablution is washing yourself in terms of clothes, cleaning, etc. is around 10, 10 liters. So you see that there is there is considerable um, water um, use in different uh, sections. Uh, when they when they propose this 40 liters per day. So this is how the 40 liters, when they assign a number, this is how they give. Where, where would you put the water? Here you don't see any car washing uh, or gardens uh, because that, that is more in the urban city. So that is where, uh, you know, the, the higher quality of life um, uh, demands a higher water availability or supply. So here the 40 liters per day is set and this is how it's being broken up look into um, more definitions. Uh, individuals, how much water is used per day? You can calculate it at a household uh, level. So in a house, if there are four people, how much water do they use per day? And those averages can be used to calculate the district average. And the district average is used to calculate the nation's average. So this is how uh, you get a norm, how much water is uh, being used at a district, state, national level. There are multiple calculators. So those who are interested after this lecture, oh, I want to see how much water I use. Because for meters, for, for electricity, you do have a meter at home. And every day, I don't know how many of you look at it. You could look at how many units you use per day. Maybe you used your AC. Maybe you used to watch TV the whole day, a cricket match. So you could go back and see how much units you can use. 
But for water, it's not like that because metering is still a very new uh, concept in, in conservation of water in India. So metering is very less, as, especially in rural areas. So what you could do is you could use these kind of calculators. So if you just go and click there, you go to a calculator uh, supplied by some open source uh, people. They would give you, they'll ask you to put in how much water did you drink today? How many, how many vessels did you clean? And those kind of questions, how many times did you take bath? It's one time, two times, etc. So these kind of data you could put into these calculators and get back the total water used per day. And that if you divide by the number of household people, you will get the liters per capita per day. Then you go back to this calculations, household, district, nations, et cetera. So what is a water footprint? Now you know how much people use, but what is a water footprint? It is the sum of total water of all the components that are used for manufacturing a product. So if you take sugar cane or sugar, for example, for making one kilogram of sugar, how much water do I use? It's astonishing that you use 1,500 liters for one kilogram of sugar. That is, so where's the summing comes? When I say sum, it is the total water used from the cropping stage, how much water you apply for a crop to the uh, processing stage where you convert sugar uh, cane into sugar. Uh, and then cleaning stage. So all this water, how much water you used for irrigation, how much water you used for taking the molasses and sugar out of the sugar cane, and then converting and washing the sugar uh, into the table format you, you get at home. So it's around 1,500 liters for one kilogram of sugar. So it is a tremendously water consuming product, okay? Let's look at, uh, now we know the rates, uh, what LPCDs we have, uh, and um, we also know how much, the, what is a water footprint, which means how much water does a product take. So let's look at the world averages. If you look at the world, uh, India is around 600 to 1000 uh, cubic meters per year, uh, and apologizing for the, uh, the boundaries, the boundaries are not the proprietary of the author, which is me. Uh, these maps are made by uh, international agencies, uh, which uh, also give uh, funds to India, like WWF and, 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 and uh, programs, not funds, but programs to India. So it is not the view of the authors, okay? Because it's a small map, some boundaries might have been uh, changed. So if you look at the uh, water consumption per capita per day, per year, you see uh, India is around 600 to 1000 um, or 1000, 1200. Uh, and that's the same numbers we, we looked at in the previous government of India slides. Uh, um, but if you look at the developed nations like US, Europe, et cetera, you get around 2000, uh, 2100. So the world average is 1240 and we are below the average, 1,000, 1,200. So India water consumption, domestic water consumption is below the world average. That could be because of the higher population we have, because um, we are very high on the population uh, and also the low uh, number of precipitation volumes that we get compared to other places. So uh, we still need to improve. Uh, so where we need to improve is better water conservation technologies, a better use of water, okay? So the other thing that uh, is more important is uh, renewable water resources. India doesn't have that many renewable water resources, whereas uh, Brazil, Russia have a lot of water resources. So even though they have a higher uh, per capita per year, they do have higher renewable resources. And countries that are most dependent on water imports, uh, these countries, mostly the Middle West, Middle East countries. Um, and if you look at the highest um, water footprint per capita or per capita rates, look at the US 2,483 meter cube per year per person. They do have some imports, but still uh, they have a very high quality of life and living standards. So they have a lot of water consumption. And Malaysia is also in the Asian countries, Malaysia is, is ranking top 2,344 um, meter cube per year per person. 
uh, and 28 percent is dependent on other countries but still they do have good rainfall okay <clears throat> so on the whole this graph tells you that india's water per person is pretty low compared to the global average of 1240 uh, and when you compare to developed nations uh, it is almost double the developed nations have double the water per person um, whereas compared to India, it is less. So that is the water that you have for drinking. That is the water you have for cleaning yourself, sanitation. So when you want to improve the lifestyle, the livelihoods and cleanliness, you need to give more water. So that is where this number comes. And we also looked at water footprints uh, and water footprints of different food products. As I said, sugar takes 1,500 liters, but also chocolate, um, um, eggs, olives, well, everything takes a lot of water. So even for a cup of coffee, one cup of coffee, which is around 200 milliliters, you would take 140 liters of water. And that includes your sugar, the water that comes from your cow, like the milk, um, and um, everything else that goes, the coffee beans, etc. So please understand that what you consume is also, there is a water footprint on it, the each product. And if you go to this website, you can get much more details on other products like bread, wheat, rice, how much do they consume per kilogram. So this is where we need to conserve the water because most of these products are made, uh, are, are developed in the rural region and we need to improve that. And our already our water per capita is pretty low. So we need to improve that. How do you do it? by uh, better water management. So that's where the introduction of the post content has come. And we have stressed on the fact that uh, there is a need for water management. The first week is to get all of you sensitized. Why do we need this water management? And especially for rural resources, rural regions, okay? Uh, we also looked at the units very, very carefully that you need to look at units uh, before you jump into conservation and liters per capita per day per year or per, per, uh, per unit. So we've looked at how much liters per capita per person is being consumed at a daily rate, which is around 40 to 70 per person in a rural village. And per year is around 1,000, uh, which is much, much lesser compared to that of a developed nation. We looked into some components of biological cycle today and we would jump into more on more focused discussions on uh, rural water management this week. The next weeks we will be looking at these hydrological cycle components with a rural focus. Uh, I would like to conclude today's uh, lecture and hope to see you in the next lecture.